Hi there, and yet one more video on, on Tana, and this time um, again using GPT-3. So I've been playing around a bit on how to use Tana Paste in combination with GPT-3. Uh, one of the things I do a lot is sort of manually structure the things I type. And I was wondering whether I could find a way to get GPT to help me with this. So one of the easiest examples is um, I think we remember our, uh, our little um, uh, project of trying to create meetings. So if I just want to have a meeting with, for instance, uh, well, who let's say, uh, John Lindquist. Um, if I now press the keyboard combination that I selected, it will send it to GPT-3 and it will actually post it back uh, in the correct format. Now, as you can see, something here goes wrong. I've uh, already posted this on uh, on Slack. It tends to not be able to find certain fields. Uh, I believe the, the issue has already been identified and, and will be fixed. But what you can see here that's really cool is that one, it detected that this was a name, uh, which it tagged, and it put it in the attendees field. Um, similar stuff like this works if I have a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Peter Doe, um, if we do the same, it will also convert this into its own specific type. Um, and again, this works reasonably well. Now, one of the things I also wanted to try was to see if I can get it to do almost like natural field building. So um, give me two fields, um, let's say purpose and title, and then do the shortcut again and it will give you two fields with a purpose and a title. Um, you can also see it's it's sort of combining or it's duplicating these things. Uh, I don't know exactly why that is but it's probably because of the, the paste format or something like that. Um, it doesn't bother me that much. It's simple to delete the other one. One more thing I wanted to, to do was uh, simple math. So uh, having a little um, little uh, exercise here, we can just ask GPT to solve it. Um, now, I do have to say that uh, GPT has been notoriously bad at actually solving math, which is ironic for a computer, so don't trust it too much or at least double check it, um, but it works. Um, you can also use it to tag concepts. So for instance, John Doe works at Google and Moonlights at Twitter. So if we do the key combination again, it will actually tag everything that I felt was useful to tag. Um, so in the script, which I'll show you and which I'll share with all of you before or after the video, uh, you can see that it actually um, learns from the things that I value. So I, call, I, I asked it to tag um, sort of companies, names, that kind of stuff. But you can you can do it differently also. You can say, hey, I want to tag all verbs or something like that. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's possible. One of the other things I was playing around is say if you have a new tag in mind. So for instance, um, let's say I want to um, start collecting stamps or whatever. Suggest me some fields for a stamp. Oh, a stamp. And in this case, um, what it will do is it will actually ask GPT and say, hey, what are um, common fields? And it will also create the, the super tag for you. So this is a great way, for instance, to implement um, sort of the fluid structure um, uh, because, well, you don't want to just adopt everything like this, but you can see, okay, so what could be cool to actually, um, actually keep in mind. Um, one more thing I taught it is um, to do natural date recognition. So, so and not only when you do the um, um, uh, use the at uh, aspect, you can also just combine them multiple things in a sentence, and it will tag them all appropriately. Um, if it detects you're trying to do something, so for instance, um, do. Uh, or let's make it over, write this document on, um, let's say, Thursday. The 
this week. It should convert it to a to-do. Um, yeah, because it's sort of detecting an active thing. Plus, what's also interesting, since it's sort of realized it's trying to do something on today um, uh, it, or tomorrow, sorry, it will tag this as a date and actually add that to the plant. So if you remember my previous videos, this will actually make sure that it shows up on the day that it's needed. So there's a lot of power here um, and it's not perfect. Again, um, there's some some quirks with the, the duplication of stuff um, and I've just started using it and I'm not quite sure how how happy I am with this being not integrated, but you can see sort of the power of having this integrated eventually in Tana, uh, suggesting different fields, um, helping me with these kinds of things, suggesting different tags depending on uh, the things I've previously tagged. So that's what I wanted to share today. Now, for a little bit of, uh, of insight, um, when you look at the script, I'm using ScriptKit uh, by John Lindquist, uh, and I've created an OpenAI and rich um, uh, uh, script. Uh, oh. And when we edit that, what you see is basically uh, a piece of JavaScript uh, and a prompt where we basically ask it, say, uh, you try to interpret what I say in Tana paste format, put double brackets around dates, people and company names. I uh, sort of borrowed this from uh, from Rob, his, uh, his interesting playground uh, thing. And the trick here is to set the temperature to zero because I was struggling with getting this stable uh, and getting it reliable enough to do and to use during my, my work. And setting this to zero makes sure that the AI doesn't get too creative. Uh, maybe I want to experiment with a little bit higher than zero to see how it can still be useful without being annoying. One of the things I also do here is I want to use short codes because um, if I want to tag actual people, um, I often don't, it's, it's actually easier now in Tana to just type uh, the at symbol and then part of the name to actually tag them. Um, but it's easier to type a short code for them. So in this case, I'm also defining a couple of short codes like replace AF with Andre Fuken. So you can actually see here is I'm training the AI to say, hey, if I get AF uses Tana, I want it to convert it to Andre Fuken uses Tana. And this is actually enough to, in combination with this, to, to teach the AI what I want. So just some fields for a movie, which you've seen. Add some fields, which is basically custom field building, some math, some date magic, and here we go with um, my meeting structure, uh, which I I use a lot. There's some stuff here, like um, if it detects a, a book, uh, I'm trying to do automatic um, sort of uh, topic recognition. So if you type in a thing, it will tag it as the thing it thinks it is, but this is a little bit trickier. So for instance, here, if I type in a book, it seems to work. Um, so for instance, uh, ego is the enemy. Uh, and if I tag it, it will most likely tag it as an actual book with the correct author and some other stuff that I actually defined before because this is my standard book type. But it doesn't always work as well. So for instance, um, when I, uh, I don't want to do something like, okay, uh, like a ledger. Um, so what is a ledger? So if you ask it, it will actually tag it as a company because Ledger is also a company that makes crypto um, uh, sort of wallets, hardware crypto wallets. But in this case, maybe I wanted the book. So in this case, it's not the greatest and that's why I didn't show it uh, specifically. Okay, that's what I wanted to, um, uh, to share today. And uh, thank you all for, uh, for another video and listening.